Thank you for joining for this evening. As you know, we are discussing from the book Living Wisely, Living Well. And it's beautiful that uh, Swami Kriyananda Ji worked on, this is the third, you might say, incarnation of a book he had. Uh, I think it was first called Do It Well. And then the word, then, sorry, it was Do It Now. Uh, it was, a you know, 365 uh, uh, readings for the year, one for each day of the year. Then he, after a few years, named it Do It, uh, now became Do It Well. And finally, uh, I remember he made it living wisely, living well. And uh, when he was about writing this book, we were very fortunate to be with him in Pune as he was writing, uh, I think part of it was written over here. And he mentioned a very interesting thing. He said, none of my books, other books, no other book has taken so much energy or working on as this one. He said, but I finally, I can say I've got it. I got what I wanted to convey through this book. And it is something for him to say that uh, it required a maximum, you might say, labor of energy or revisions or editings. And it also got an international award. It's one of our uh, you know, most loved and universal books. You could gift it to somebody. And I'm amazed how much each writing actually very directly ties to the topic, living wisely, living well. That once somebody, Swamiji was giving a spiritual discourse and somebody said, but sir, these teachings, uh, to practice them is so difficult. And he said, uh, you know, what are your options? <laughs> he said, you have to live anyway. Why not live properly? Why not live with awareness or to develop that understanding? What is life really about? It's like we all do different things. I think it goes without saying. Swami used to say everything is uh, individual, very unique in itself. God has created it that way. And this could be one of the ways in which we pursue our spiritual journey. That does God exist? But if you look, even scientists are finding that every drop of water, even the snowflakes are different. Ma Master Yogananda Ji said even uh, each atom is dowered with individuality. It is such a unique staggering concept that it cannot come out of randomness. That oh, something is happening. And I'm, I happen to be a part of this process and my family happens to be a part of this process. Actually, once there was a very interesting joke in our Sangha. Somebody said that probably in the higher ages or in future times when man's wisdom is uh, more refined and mass uh, consciousness is more elevated, perhaps the word coincidence will lose its position in the dictionary. That there is nothing like a coincidence. That... We have to live anyway, but once we understand that you and I have a role to play or we can uh, play it well or unwell, then we say, why would I live it unwell? You know, I, ha I want to live with wisdom. And that's where uh, the, that's the gift of, you might say, God through the awakened saints and sages. And they teach us simple things which are extremely practical. And for this evening... Also, we have picked a reading which is very practical, friends. June 21st, by the way, happy International Yoga Day uh, to all of you. The reading is, Direct every sorrow upward from your heart to the Christ center between the eyebrows. <clears throat> the more determinedly you raise your consciousness from your heart, the closer you will come to understanding this eternal truth. Grief is a delusion born of egoic separation from the true self, God. Isn't this wonderful that sorrow is so universal? Actually, the very first talk that Paramahansa Yogananda Ji gave when he went to the West in 1920, it was called the science of religion. And he said that mankind everywhere, actually all of nature, but it is most easily seen in mankind. We are trying to avoid sorrow and suffering, which is to say we are moving the positive way to see it is. We are always looking for happiness. Uh, and Master said that that is ingrained in all of us. And so here Swami is saying that when faced with sorrow, how can we overcome it? He says, you know, where is sorrow felt? In the heart. People say, oh... He broke my heart, you know, the way he spoke or the way they acted. Oh, I was not expecting this. And so many, it's a long list. It 
it's a very long list right from <laughs> I won't, you know maybe the amount of sugar in your tea perhaps that doesn't bring so much as sorrow as uh, you know irritability or disappointment but the list is long and uh, there are times when we are faced with grief sorrow and Krinanda ji saying the eternal truth is that grief comes from it's a delusion that is the best news it's a delusion and it comes when to the degree we feel we are separated from the reality higher reality the highest reality called god so let's discuss some of these concepts and he gives a technique over there and if you read the few readings before this 21st june and one or two after that you will see he is making the same point in a slightly different way so sorrow is so universal i was also when i was thinking of uh, the talk this evening i thought of some moments in my life when i had sorrow uh, in the reading after that swami ji says uh, prior to this he actually says use the pain that you feel during sorrow as a guide as a teacher what can you learn from it and i remember one time i was slightly you know uh, expecting something many years ago from a friend and uh, this was a something i was trying to do it was an idealistic work many people were you know encouraging me on that it didn't matter so much i had made up my mind and then you know kind of shared and i had tried to involve other people but i remember one particular person they said that you know uh, initially there was total like denial that no i'm not part of this work i don't like this work and i was sad i said why can't you see the logic <laughs> isn't that how we explain things you know sometimes because uh, we are convinced we think others should be convinced but it dawned upon me later when i was calm and by myself i reflected that and actually smiled at this realization i said oh aditya just give yourself just a few months ago you would not have understood this point at all at all it was not even part of my consciousness it was related to the spiritual understanding and path and the teachings as it was you wouldn't understand a bit of it but here you are expecting somebody to understand it and it's not, it doesn't work like that you might say friends like one of swami's songs says that who are you expecting from i'm paraphrasing everyone in this world is a stranger everyone is trying to find greater strength it's like yes you may be drowning but how do you know only he who is stronger to save himself first of all can pull you out so when we are going through some crisis of disappointment uh, because somebody has let us down they are not on board with us in something remember this the spiritual teachings say the ego which defines us has its natural limitation by its very nature it's like a child you cannot expect a child an infant to carry your bag of vegetables by the very nature it is limited and uh, that that was a very i immediately saw like i said i was smiling when i heard re realized that so again whenever things in life people misunderstand you betray you sometimes sometimes they do so intentionally uh, the thought comes to my mind of christ on the night when he was uh, you know arrested and in the morning when he was crucified he knew it was coming and he, he couldn't fall asleep so peter uh, you might say uh, you know the he was the one who you know, christ said had deepest intuition and was the leader you might say of the 12 apostles he asked him you know you know, is everything okay and uh, you know christ said that uh, you know i'm going somewhere and peter said i'll follow you wherever you go and christ said you won't be able to you will actually before the cock crows in the morning you know you would have betrayed me thrice and it so happened when he was arrested peter ran for his life you might say he was afraid that the ego wants to do something good and it's a very good direction but when it comes to something so high it has its limitation and uh, like swami would say that we have to ultimately find that one by one in god that is part of the spiritual it's not good or bad it is just the way it is that one by one we have to move in the direction of god now what else happens another thing is death we can get disappointed we can get deeply hurt or you know uh, by something like that again i would say let me first explain 
where God comes in the picture, some of you perhaps know, these are very central teachings of Yogananda Ji. Yogananda said, when God created this universe, He had nothing to create it out of. So He became everything. He didn't, uh, He manifested, you might say, Himself. The one became the many. He became you and me. He became, you know, the physical cosmos. Everything, actually. They say it happens in three stages. Thought, energy, and then it gets condensed in as matter. We also operate in the same way. Before you accomplish anything, you think about it. Then you put energy in that direction and finally we are able to arrive at that creation, physical manifestation of our dreams. Like people say, fulfill your dream. So first it is in the thought. Similarly, Yogananda Ji said that we should actually never be in grief because everything is God's manifestation. Now here it is very difficult. He agreed to that. He said most people do not realize that this is a dream going on. God has, is dreaming us. Many times when we are in delusion, we think God does not exist. Or we think He is far away. Or we think He does not, He is caring for everybody except me. He has forgotten me. And I remember a letter I was reading from Padre Pio. He was a, an Italian saint. And he was writing to one of his disciples who was saying, My life has become so difficult. And after all these years, I think God has abandoned me. And he wrote back and he says, Of all things, he says, If you could see it from my eyes, you would see that he has never been closer to you. Reminds me again of Swami Kirananda Ji's, uh, you know, one time when he was expelled from the original organization he was working with, where he had found master, he thought he would serve all his life. And he was expelled from there by a misunderstanding and he thought that was the end of his life. For years he was in grief. Uh, he kept his practices going, but he said uh, one time Anand Mohima told him, Maybe she wrote to him that, see this as your Guru's grace. And he said, I just couldn't. I knew she might be right. But he says, my reasoning, you see friends, when we are in a mood, when we are, uh, you know, in grief, reason is affected by feeling. So if your heart, if your feeling is disturbed, if you don't like somebody, you will just not be able to see any good also that they do. Or you don't like a situation. And, you know, we are totally ready to dismiss everything around it. People sometimes leave the spiritual path. They say, oh, you know, they say this is the right step for me. Maybe it is, but did you make that decision in calmness or out of emotion? Kriyananda Ji used to say this is the, you might say, the secret of making good decisions. If anyone comes up to you with an idea and they are emotional about it, he said, unless they learn how to tackle that emotion and bring about calmness into the situation. He said, if they continue with their emotion, you can be very sure that it's not going to go the way they are hoping it will. You know, because why? Is God against emotions? No, upward moving emotions, happiness is a good thing. But excitement, it is bound to come down. I want to come back to what I was saying. God created this he is vibrationless, Master said. In Him actually, in His pure essence, time does not exist over there. Space does not exist. Hence they say that uh, in yoga, the goal of yoga, samadhi or self-realization, yes, it comes after many incarnations, by the, our efforts, by the grace of a guru. But Yogananda Ji said, when it comes, the scriptures declare, Patanjali said it comes as a smriti, as a remembrance, it's like as you wake up from sleep, oh, of course I had gone to sleep yesterday and I slept too long. Uh, I have to leave that those dreams behind. You don't forget them. Master said you actually, even that memory stays with you forever. And But he says, now you look back at all those incarnations, the good things you did, the errors that happened through you in mistake, all those mistakes, you look back and you see that, only God did it. I couldn't have, because we don't exist. The ego is also, you might say, like a temporary mask, which has been given to each of us to go through this drama and to come out of it. So, when we are in an emotion, Kriyananda is saying that 
calm your you're in grief you're in sorrow your heart is broken you know people are <laughs> the spine can get bent our corners of our mouth come down tears come down you know our mood is off people say i don't want to talk to anybody you know sometimes it can take a very we can go down that road for a long time actually i'm also a doctor i can tell you it can wreck people's lives they take their life sometimes out of grief uh, one of the challenges medical fraternity is facing who is declaring number of suicides is growing every year on one level this is a very serious issue on the other hand the solution is so simple kriyananda said sit up straight he said feel that you know become aware of that grief it is causing you pain but he said don't focus too much on it focus at this point between the two eyebrows that is the christ center and he said that when we can and in meditation that is exactly what we do we keep the spine straight we lift our gaze and then you might say we bring our awareness to this point medically i would say you're bringing your uh, you're awakening the prefrontal lobes where maternal love perseverance cooperation kindness decision making Uh, your happiness your personality all these things are situated at this point why would you not want to be there but then he's saying you have to apply determination that is our part many times i have seen friends that i was going through a very joyful period and things did happen but they did not affect me but if our consciousness is not at that point if we are not uh, you know calm in ourselves it can lead to further and further delusion so i want to read those lines once again direct every sorrow upward from your heart to the christ center between the eyebrows the more determinedly you raise your consciousness from your heart the closer you will come to the understanding of this eternal truth grief is a delusion born of egoic separation from the true self god what will grief be and that's why the chant i was singing door of my heart it begins uh, yogananda said you should sing that chant when you immediately when you're very desperate to want god's response and i've opened my heart i'm seeking you night and day i'm looking for you where are you but then remember we sing loudly in the beginning that that chant has to become a mental repetition and you have to bring that understanding that god is not at all far from us master said a true devotee never says that as we mature we say okay i'm feeling the need to love you more god where do you love him at this point where emotions do not exist devotion is interiorizing our heart's energy and then we bring it to this point and we feel we realize it's like wilt thou come can become thou hast come thou hast now come to me you know you could even say now my days are full of joy because you are with me all the time night and day night and day you are with me night and day and uh, because separation does not exist kriyananda ji said yoga science is very vast there are many techniques many tools but the essence of yoga is to calm the heart's feelings and to bring them to this point at this point enlightenment comes at this point the divine realization comes uh, this is scientists have found this is the seat of foresight decision making integration of information i think in future they will also come to understand this is the seat of wisdom that uh, you know when we are established at that point we can still go through life but i think we will be in the position where we are able to help others in the best possible way now you may not have to teach everybody this deep truth that sit up straight bring your energy to the point between the two eyebrows but i have felt this in the presence of many acharyas long term practitioners in ananda swami ji that uh, in their presence because they are calm because their consciousness swami kriyananda said yogananda said live at this point all the time and yogananda ji was at that point all the time they operate from that seat of consciousness you might say when we go in their presence in a satsang uh, when we are talking to them just because they are there we receive that gift better ideas come in their presence smiles come to our face i remember one time a devotee used to came in swami ji's satsangs uh, when he was doing them in 2009 in pune <clears throat> years later she 
said to a small group of us she said at that time i didn't know yeah, i had not even read autobiography of yogi as to just come and sit there she was a school going girl she used to come with her family i didn't know what is a chakra i didn't know what is karma i didn't have a guru i used to just come and sit but she said as life passed i always remembered in that room in swami ji's presence i was somehow very happy always and then now she has developed the understanding that it is the magnetism it is you know the energy that he uh, the direction he taught us you might say somebody once had this beautiful dream and uh, after swami ji's passing and in the dream swami was saying that am i not always with you in higher consciousness so it's so beautiful and we also have their help and grace i want to share uh, read this uh, answered prayer of yogananda ji it is simply called a prayer page 217 this was from eternity and in brackets yogananda ji wrote that he received this prayer after a great test of god in disease or in health in success or in failure in poverty or in prosperity in joy or in sorrow in disaster or in safety in life or in death I stand immutably unalterably unshakably loyal devoted and firmly loving thee my heavenly father forever forever and forever what is death death is simply changing the physical form it has no bearing on the energy and thought bodies actually of course when an enlightened yogi passes away i was at a tea where somebody told swami ji kriyananda ji towards the end of his life had started hinting and he was saying i don't know how long i'll keep you know this body and somebody said oh sir we'll miss you when you go to the astral world and swami ji said well i have no plans of leaving any traces behind in the you know which is to say in the astral or causal world that uh, you know we have those three realities but uh, yogananda ji said uh, that when we understand how god made us and uh, guru's help is there god's own exhortation is there god created this world for us to enjoy but not forever it is impossible to enjoy this forever the sooner we develop that understanding and work with the positive side that okay i will have to leave this it's like a house where you're staying or a furniture which will break down or a good meal which has to end then you say i instead of being sad about that can i find joy over there and swami used to say you can find a glimpse that god is trying to give you show you what is the power of love by the love of a spouse or by the love of a friend he is trying to show you the beauty through the beauty of a rainbow but does the rainbow last forever kiran used to say look at the sunset clouds they're so beautiful but look at them just after the sun has set they are gray and heavy so Let's all move in the direction through satsang, through our tools and techniques, through these daily quotes, through our efforts, through prayers to God and Guru for deeper understanding. They who gave us, who are showing us the direction and giving us these teachings, they must also be having tremendous power to bring about the realization of these. So let's offer ourselves to this deeper understanding. and i think this is the greatest service we can do to our friends and family members to ourselves and i think this is the will of god and guru is also god bless you may you have a very joyful week through the practice of that technique of meditation and bringing your energy at the point between the two eyebrows god bless you